It's snowing outside. So I'm kind of happy this morning. But anyway, today we're going to be working on the E200 gas converted Razor electric scooter. So we're going to start off by installing this chain guard that I've had missing for quite a while. I'm so responsible, but hey, I found it again, so. Ben's on a roll here with breakdowns. He popped my rear tire on this thing. Now we got a flat with Ben when we took it out last time, which we'll show you. My fault, just because I'm a little bit on the chunky side, doesn't mean that tire has to kill itself. If you know a tire that might be suicidal, please call the National Suicide Prevention Hotline. Well, first of all, let's show you how we got it home. So now, I'm going to be teaching you guys at home how to replace a tire on a Razor E200 scooter. This is going to be the same on an electric scooter because I kept the same tire. Let's get right into it. We've since ordered a new tire right here. So let's get it installed. The Allen head set, Harbor Freight. Super useful if you guys are working on this Chinese stuff. Very happy with how the scooter's doing out so far. Here's the rim. Let's get our new tire mounted. If you don't know what you're doing here, it can be kind of a pain. So we're going to show you how to replace the rear tire on a Razor E200 electric scooter. Mine is gas converted because I'm mentally insane. We're going to go ahead and get this off. Since I have this ground wire, I have to pull the axle. The basic idea here, you need to remove this sprocket so we can get these bolts back here to split the rim in half. These are in fact 8 millimeter bolts here. On yours they could be Allen heads. And if you guys don't have an 8 millimeter socket or wrench, uh, 5 sixteenths can sometimes be substituted in. Remember guys, there are two types of countries. Those who use the metric system and those who land on the moon. Pull our sprocket off there. I need to hit it with like a rubber mallet or something you might have to just be very careful if you do that not to bend it but it should come off really easily now these allen heads here what these are gonna do is these when i pull these four allen heads out around the edges it's going to split the rim in half so the rim is going to come apart like this then we'll be able to slide our tire off very easily if your tire still has air in it the one you're replacing make sure you let all of the air out of it if you don't do that you will have some issues with stuff aka the rim will balloon out it doesn't come off very easy try put some penetrating oil on the threads the threads are visible on the back end so you could put some on there fairly easily make sure you save the lock washers these had blue thread locker on them as well it's not a bad idea to put back on there when you reassemble so now the rim splits apart and at this point you are going to have to pull your axle out i just tightened it wow that was smart Dr. Linguini has arrived. And just like that, guys, we have our rim apart. There's a little bit of rust in here. The bearings still feel okay. This one has a little bit of, of roughness in it, but it doesn't have any play or anything. So I'm going to just say I'm going to keep them. All right, so we got the new tire in, and we had this rubber piece here that you want to make sure you get on the valve stem. This piece right here, it's going to help protect the valve stem. So you put that rubber piece in there, make sure that this is in there because that's going to keep your bearings separated. And then you put this on there and make sure that the valve stems holes are lined up just the way it came off. And then you put your four bolts in. So you just put those bolts in there like that, and double check, make sure everything is good. And what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to hook this valve stem up to my tire pump and air up the tire partially before I get the thing bolted together because I want to make sure that... I don't lose my valve stem in the rim. So once you've got that done, you just tighten this down here. All four of these bolts, make sure to go in a diagonal pattern or cross pattern and make sure you don't hear any binding or anything going on. Now get this. 
So, a couple weeks after I replaced that clutch cover chain guard thing that I showed you guys earlier, uh, the clutch broke, but it didn't break like you might think. Bearing didn't go out or anything like that. No, the freaking engine shaft split in half. So for those of you at home who are using these engines, keep your secondary guard on there if it's this silver clutch cover. It, if it's the other one that's not built for it, don't worry about it because it has two internal bearings and it's fine. But if you have the one with this cover on it, make sure it's on for your sake. Now some of this metal work is a little messy, so let's go ahead and clean it up with the angle grinder. Today we're also going to be giving this thing a foot plate finally so your foot doesn't fall onto the ground randomly as you're driving it. So, see here, I'm kind of mocking up, thinking about an idea of how we're gonna mount this foot plate on here. All right, it's time to cut the frame tabs. Now here, I'm just disconnecting the wires and cleaning up the metal for the frame mounts for the footplate. Let's get these bad boys welded on here. So, we found a board for the 200. We have our cuts marked out that we need to do. Let's go ahead and do those on the jigsaw right now. sand it off because, you know, I want things to look nice and pretty. Now we're also going to be mounting the front brakes, so here I'm drilling the hole for it and then we're going to bolt it up. And one day we'll revisit this project, we'll clean up a lot more of the metal work, kind of redo some of the engine mounts on the back there, and clean it up a bit, paint it, give it some cool colors. Until then, it's Cartman Productions, I'll see you next time on Cartman Productions. Watch out!